Hi, this is the Fab Four video tutorial part one. My name is Zena, and I'm the composer who worked on the Fab Four demos with producer Doug Rogers. And it's my pleasure to show you around the Fab Four library. This is an outstanding collection of rare 60s sounds. They've been meticulously recreated from the original instruments using vintage recording equipment. Virtually everything you need for customizing the sounds and creating new instruments is all here within easy reach which makes Fab Four incredibly adaptable and expandable. And you can easily create complete tracks with just this one library. So let's have a quick look around the play interface. Starting at top left, we have the main menu. And most of these selections are self-explanatory. About shows the version number. Check for updates lets you know when there's an updated version to download. Open gives you the standard window for opening files but there's a specialized browser window over here which is far more convenient for accessing all your play libraries and I'll show you that in a minute. Here you can see the recent files you may have loaded. Save lets you save the instrument with any changes you've made. Current instrument gives you a couple of options. You can set the samples to stream from the disk or to be loaded into RAM. As these instruments are stacked with multiple layers, articulations and lots of variations, it would take a huge amount of RAM to load them all. So the default is to stream from the disk. Delete removes the current instrument and the advanced properties lets you adjust the fine tuning and set the polyphony. The settings button gives you access to the streaming buffers so you can fine tune plays response to your particular system. And over here we have the instrument menu which shows a list of all the instruments you've loaded. Play is multi-timbral, so you can have up to 16 instruments in one play instance. And of course you can have as many play instances as you like on the separate tracks of your sequencer. Moving down we have the channel source selection. Some play libraries have distinctly different variations of the same sample in the left and right channels. For example, one might be a guitar distorted through an amp, and the other might be the same guitar through a clean amp. With this, you can select any combination you want. The stereo spread is a great way to widen the sound. The pan control obviously pans the sound left and right. The delay, you can add delay from a really short slapback right up to a massive five seconds. And you've got a feedback and level control there too. A reverb, uh, not just any reverb, this is a fantastic convolution reverb created by East West and the highest quality you can get. This includes the hall that the Symphonic Orchestra Library was recorded in, the East-West Studios and Live Echo Chambers, plus some other great environments and combinations. On the left we have ADT. Now this mimics that great 60s chorus effect, which was produced when two tape recorders playing the same thing were mixed together slightly out of sync. And you can get a lot more sounds by adding or removing ADT from the patches. And remember that all these controls can be saved into a new instrument, so you can quickly build up a large variety of customizations. And uh, in the middle there's the master volume, a solo and a mute button. The envelope is pretty straightforward. You can do things like lengthen the attack, shorten the decay, lengthen the release, and so on. This lower section has various MIDI settings. Here's where you set the MIDI channel of each instrument. You can also transpose the MIDI, adjust the sensitivity of the velocity, and this velocity min-max lets you limit the velocity to a certain range. Uh, many of the instruments have multiple layers of velocity switching, and this min-max is useful if, for example, you find that you would like to exclude the extreme loudest or softest samples from the range being played. If you're running separate MIDI ports, you can select those here, and below that you can choose the output channels for each of the individual instruments. To the left is a display of technical info about CPU usage, disk access, amount of memory used by the samples loaded, and the number of voices used when playing. And over here, the very important articulations window. This lists all the variations that an instrument may have, like staccato, legato, fingered, picked, slides, etc. 
So let's load up some instruments, and then you can see and hear how it all works. All Play libraries have a specialized browser window. From here, you can see all the available hard drives, and you can load the instruments from here, but far more conveniently, down here, there is a list of all installed Play libraries. And as you add libraries, they'll appear down here in this list. So that gives you very quick access to a huge number of instruments. And they all load up with their own individual interface and controls. And soon, the older East-West Quantum Loop libraries will be available, and you'll be able to access all those great sounds here as well through this one browser. OK, so let's load up some Fab Four instruments. As you can see, there's a selection of bass, drums, guitars, keyboards, and some other miscellaneous instruments like sitar. I'm going to start with Year Drums. And I'll click this Replace button, and that'll clear out anything that was in there before. And down here on the keyboard, you can now see the keys which have been allocated to the drum samples. So let's get some bass. I'll choose Come To Bass. You'll see here there are two available options, an Elements version and a Master version. The Master version loads all the available articulations of the instrument, and the Elements just loads the first articulation, and then you can pick and choose which other ones you want to load later. So for this, let's load them all, and this time using the Add button. Play is multi timbral so you can load up to 16 instruments into one instance. OK, so that's all loaded up. And up here in this instrument menu, you can see that there is now both the drums and the bass in this one play instance. And as I click on each one, you can see that the keyboard down the bottom changes to match the key groups of that instrument. And I can just keep adding more and more instruments here as well. So that's a quick overview of the huge amount of options and control you have at your fingertips. In part two, I'll be demonstrating the use of these controls, showing how the articulations work, and demonstrating how authentic these instruments really are. So stick around.